Breaking right now, the White House has just revoked CNN's chief White House correspondent's credentials, press credentials, after his despicable behavior at today's news conference. Also happening today, Attorney General Jeff Sessions submitting his letter of resignation at President Trump's request. In her first interview since all this news broke, counselor to the president, Kellyanne Conway, spoke with me. We covered a whole lot of ground, including that press conference, but my first question to her tonight was, does Sessions' resignation mean the Mueller investigation is nearing its end? Watch. Well, that's up to Mr. Mueller and his investigators. So one has nothing to do with the other, really, because the president has made very clear as recently as today, Trish, that we've been very compliant with the Mueller investigation. I think over one million pieces of paper have been produced. Uh, over 30 uh, Trump-associated individuals have complied with requests to testify or to produce documents, as I understand it. Mm -hmm. uh, but also, it's been very costly to the taxpayer, and it's gone on for over a year and a half. And so when the president right, says, but, but, but let's Not to interrupt it. you, Kellyanne, but the problem was with Jeff Sessions, he had to recuse himself. And I know that the president and many members of the administration were super frustrated by that because he needs to be overseeing it. Now you'll have the opportunity to get someone in. We've got an interim uh, gentleman there, Mr. Whitaker, who's going to be coming in. But, uh, I, you know, you're going to have someone at some point that should be able to say, in theory, to Bob Mueller, OK, what do you got? Well, sure, but it's been overseen by the deputy attorney general all along also. But under Mr. Whitaker's leadership, uh, we'll see. I don't know how much he's even been briefed on the investigation. This is all very new and early. Why did it take until today for that resignation letter to be submitted and accepted? And it's pretty typical to, to have personnel changes after the first midterms. I think that would make this administration no different than past administrations. Okay. Uh, who's on the short list? For Attorney General? Yes. Oh, I won't get ahead of the president on that. I've, I've seen some rumors and speculation, but I think something the president said today in his press conference, Trish, is very true. Many people want to work in this administration, whether it's on his staff, whether it's as cabinet officials throughout mm -hmm. the administration. We have a ton of resumes, a lot of great talent out there, and I think it's going to be somebody who can continue the great work of this president's Department of Justice and at the same time not have recused from the Russia investigation. Okay, I'm going to get to that press conference in just a minute. But before I do, uh, your thoughts on what went down there last night. Uh, you're now looking at uh, the Democrats with the House majority, but uh, you, you guys were, were very successful on the Senate front. What's your reaction? The president actually made history last night, Trish, with the Senate, because only eight times in the last 80 years has the president's party in power picked up a Senate seat. This president's party picked up two, probably three Senate seats. That's just not been done in decades. And yet again, Donald Trump defies history instead of repeating it, sets new trends instead of following trends. And I think it's important because this country responded to the Kavanaugh hearings and the disgraceful, disgusting treatment of an honorable man. Uh, you saw the four swing state Democrats who voted against Brett Kavanaugh in North Dakota, Indiana, Missouri, and now Florida. They're voted out by their constituents. They voted against Kavanaugh. Their voters voted against them. Joe Manchin, the single Democrat who voted for Brett Kavanaugh, probably saved his Senate seat because of that affirmative vote for Brett Kavanaugh. So Kavanaugh definitely so had that was a big a influence. Remember, this, what about well, the, 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 the caravan of migrants Trump, that, that continue marching yes, uh, that our way the tonight even? Um, how Indeed. much did immigration play into this as well? Immigration is a huge issue. This president has made very clear border security is national security and economic mm -hmm. security is national security. I yeah. think the booming Trump economy Economy, the fact that he is tough about immigration. He says, listen, immigrate legally. We want you to come legally. Uh, you can go through one of the 26 ports of entry. You could be one of the 33 million people who have immigrated legally to this country. We're the mm -hmm. world's most generous country when it comes to legal immigration. Right. So let's continue with that. And, and clearly he has a difference says, of opinion with Jim Acosta on that. And I want to get to that uh, uh, now infamous moment in today's press conference. Uh, you know, First of all, I, I, I want to show the viewer this. We don't need to play the sound. We're going to do that a little bit later. But I want them to see here the actions of Jim Acosta with that female aide because um, it, it, it struck me as extremely aggressive. You don't put your hands on a young woman. But he did. 
Um, and you did. And, and I, 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 as I watched it, I, I worried. I worried for her. I, I worried. I thought, is the president going to have to come down and, and intervene and, and break this up? It, it struck me as, I mean, aside from being extraordinarily unprofessional, my concern again was for her and her safety. And again, we can show you that video. It's very clear that Keep he has it. his hand on her in a way that, you know, if, if the tables were reversed. Well, look at her face. Look at her face. She's shocked, and I don't want to make her the issue. This is a, a lovely young woman who's just there to do her job. Mm -hmm. And uh, and so I don't want her to become a household name either. And, and I just look, I've defended Jim Acosta, Kellyanne, and I've defended him when he's out there trying to do his job and he gets heckled in the crowds. Mm -hmm. That's not right either. But what he did to her today uh, it just really struck me as, as you know, crossing a line. And then he also takes selfies with some of the people in the crowds, we've noticed. Um, but in, in any event, uh, it just is, it crosses a line. You don't put your hands on a woman. I think we all had to hear that recently uh, in some other context. Yeah. And I'm not sure that he's apologized to that young woman, but she certainly is owed one. Yeah, I'd agree that she is owed one. Thank you so much, Kellyanne Conway.